everyone and welcome to another video where I'm going to be teaching you something very cool uh, and by something very cool I mean the Scandinavian defense or a certain line of the Scandinavian defense. Now after uh, pretty much the only uh, opening video I've ever done on the Evans Gambit, uh, I've asked a question uh, on my channel whether you guys would enjoy uh, more uh, videos uh, of this kind where I'm just explaining some openings and uh, a very high percentage of you said yes, 87% 87 of you said that you would enjoy uh, learning more about uh, certain openings so uh, I, I'm not gonna do these kinds of videos very often maybe once a week maybe once in two weeks I don't know maybe once a month uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes but uh, for today I've prepared for you uh, a, a wonderful def uh, well opening for black the Scandinavian defense and for the first time ever on this channel uh, as I'm explaining on uh, the opening from black's perspective I'm gonna flip the board so we're gonna have the black pieces uh, on the other side so there we go uh, I'm gonna have uh, the black pieces for this tutorial, whereas Mr. Hoodie Guy uh, will have the white pieces. And now, uh, if you if you haven't seen the uh, tutorial on the Evans Gambit, it will be the first link in the description below. Uh, so do check that out as well if you're only starting out with, with some nice openings. So here, uh, the line I've prepared is the Scandinavian, like I said, uh, but not just any Scandinavian, but uh, after e4 and d5, which is the Scandinavian defense, uh, captures uh, and captures with the queen. Sorry about that. Uh, knight to c3, we get to uh, pretty much the starting position of the Scandinavian defense. Uh, sorry, <laughs> knight to c3, uh, the starting position of the Scandinavian defense. Your queen is under attack, and here you have to decide what to do. Now, uh, queen to a5 and queen to d8 are the most played uh, moves here. And when I was um, starting out, I remember uh, learning about the Scandinavian defense. I read uh, about the Scandinavian in some books, and these were pretty much the only two replies. I didn't see any other uh, replies, and only some two years ago, I've seen queen to d6, and I was very, very interested by this move, and ever since then, uh, I've been using it in online play. I've even used it in over-the-board play, and uh, it's, a, it's a very fun opening to play. So we're gonna discuss the queen to d6 Scandinavian, as you might have picked up uh, from the position on the thumbnail. So here uh, white uh, continues with the d4, uh, with the, the, the well the, the most played move uh, in this position by white and this is what you're gonna play. You're gonna play knight to f6, uh, white's gonna play knight to f3 and here you're gonna play a6. So this is the setup you want to remember. Sometimes people play c6, uh, pretty much it depends on, on what you prefer. I prefer a6 so we're gonna cover that. So queen d6, knight f6 and a6, uh, this is your starting setup. And here uh, g3. This is what white will usually play uh, because white will want to take advantage of your oddly placed queen. Uh, so uh, he wants to attack it somehow uh, most of the times and uh, since knight to b5 is out of the question you've already played a6. Uh, white will uh, more often than not play g3 here and it makes sense. It's a very natural way to develop your pieces. You're gonna play bishop g2, you're gonna castle and then you have the f4 square guarded by the pawn uh, so you can uh, develop this piece uh, with an attack on the queen. So this is what white will uh, like 90% of the times play. Uh, you're gonna continue developing. When playing this uh, Scandinavian, you will want to castle queen side. So you wanna develop your queen side pieces as soon as possible. Bishop g4, you pin the knight, white will play bishop g2, and you're gonna go knight to c6. So a very, very natural way to develop your pieces. White will castle, and you're gonna castle. And this is basically where, where the fun starts. So You've developed your uh, entire queen side, and you still have to decide what to do with your king side and how to, how to develop it. So here, uh, most of the times, white will go for bishop to f4, and this is what we're going to cover. But just in case um, uh, you uh, decide to play this and uh, you you encounter a different one, I'm going to mention uh, two other moves that are that are very likely to happen in this position. So sometimes your opponent might try something like h3. And while you can capture, for example, capture here, uh, uh, queen captures, and now go for this queen captures on d4 move, uh, yes, you've grabbed the pawn, but you've allowed the white a very strong setup against your king, you allow rook to d1, so it's not, not a very, very uh, good for black, especially if it's a blitz game or something like that, uh, you don't want to allow your opponent like this. So if h3, you're just going to go back, bishop to h5, and then you're perfectly fine. Of course, if your opponent continues with the g4, uh, you're going to move the bishop back, bishop to g6, and the game continues with you having constant pressure on this pawn here. So, uh, aside from that h3 idea, we said that we were going to cover another one, so h3 is possible, uh, so don't capture the knight, might be a bit too much to handle, uh, d5 is another move you might encounter uh, a lot of times. 
not a lot, but uh, some of the time. So here you're gonna go 95, and it's basically a capture fest. Just everything just gets traded down. Uh, your opponent will most likely play bishop to f4, pin the knight, but it doesn't matter because knight captures an f3, comes with check. So your, your opponent has to react to this. Bishop captures. You're gonna capture here, offer a queen trade because it's favorable for you. Uh, and after queen captures here, now you play e5 and you are very happy. Either your opponent moves the bishop and you have a beautiful pawn here, or mm, most likely your opponent will capture d captures an e6 au passant, and then you're gonna capture with the queen. If rook f3 e1 or something attacking the queen, you're gonna play queen f5. Now you have a lot of pressure here. Uh, the bishop cannot move, the queen would hang, and it's, uh, well, it, it, it's a very nice position for black to play, and you will have a very, very nice development. Bishop to e6 is coming, rook to e8 is coming, and it's a perfectly fine position for black. So this is uh, what you need to consider uh, in this position after, you know, both, both players finished castling. So h3 is an idea you might encounter, so keep that in mind, and d5 is also an idea uh, you, you might encounter. But uh, most likely you will face bishop to f4 right away. And this forces you to deal with the fact that your queen is somewhat exposed here. You still haven't had the opportunity to push e5, uh, and your king side is still a bit undeveloped. So it looks very scary, uh, but it's actually perfectly fine for black. Uh, because here, after this bishop to f4 move, uh, you're just going to play queen to b4. And now your queen is out of the woods, you're very safe here, and you still have this pressure uh, on this pawn, so white needs to find a way how to deal with this. And white has uh, plenty of ways to, to play this position, so we're just going to cover again three, which are the most common. Uh, I will mention one, uh, d5 is a very popular reply here, uh, but I've actually played a classical game uh, over the board against the Fide Master, and I won a very nice game with the black pieces after playing e5 here. And notice that white cannot capture because the queen hangs, but this is exactly what my opponent went for and was a re really interesting position. So if you're interested in seeing that, uh, I will put a link to that in the description below. Uh, also, it will be the second link in the description below if you want to uh, check out this line a bit further. But it's perfectly fine for black, uh, you know, nothing for you to worry about. And when I say nothing, I mean almost nothing. So uh, d5 is one of the options that you're going to face, but you just reply with e5 and you're perfectly fine. And another uh, option you have to be worried about is a3. A3 because your opponent wants you to capture on b2, but you never want to capture on b2. This is not why you played the queen to b4. Uh, if you capture on b2, you might think, okay, I can capture on b2 and get away with it. No, you can't. No one can capture this pawn and get away with it. It's it's just too much. The bishop uh, and the rook will simply become too powerful, and you're just going to have a terrible game. Uh, so it, it's not possible. What you want to play here, and this is what you want to remember, so a3 is met with queen to c4, and this is where you're perfectly fine. Uh, your pieces are uh, on optimal squares, and now you will capture the d4 pawn. Uh, there's nothing white can do about it. White can either uh, the, white can basically decide whether he wants to give it up here uh, or uh, just allow knight capture. So most likely you'll see something like h3, uh, rook captures on d4. You're gonna attack the queen and now queen to e1, guarding the bishop here, and uh, now now you can play bishop captures on f3 uh, or, or or better yet queen to e1, not queen to c1, queen to e1. Uh, and now you're going to see uh, bishop captures on f3, bishop captures, and now e5. Here you're going to give up the pawn uh, to further your development. You want to start your uh, development uh, as soon as possible. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you know, if you're a party person, you might even consider rook captures on f4. I mean, it's, uh, it's a nice idea, captures and captures. Uh, you're now up two pawns, but you're down you're down the exchange. So it's possible to play this, but uh, for example, after captures, captures, and queen e3, you're gonna have to go into queens again. Uh, queens uh, and uh, not queen, uh, queens are off the board. You're ha gonna have to go into an end game, and uh, I mean, if you're if you're a pawn person, maybe this is the uh, the way to uh, play this position for you. Uh, but if you're not after, let's say, bishop captures on f3, uh, don't capture, you can just give back the pawn, e5, and after bishop captures, you're just going to play knight captures on e5, queen captures, and queen to c5 now, and this is how you finish development. Uh, because now if captures, then you finally capture and bring this bishop into the game, you're, well, then you can bring the rook into the game as well, and if, let's say, queen e3, you, you just go back again, you offer a queen trade, 
and here white either trades or moves the queen uh, but then you go bishop to d6 and now you're perfectly fine you're gonna bring the rook into the game and uh, everything is uh, everything is fine here for example if knight e4 uh, attacking your queen you can just trade captures captures and yes white does have a lot of pressure here but you are welcome to, to play c6 uh, block white's uh, attack on the b7 pawn uh, and you're gonna bring the rook into the game next uh, and so on uh, when, once you protect the queen side pawns so these are the two moves uh, you have to be uh, you know uh, considerable of so uh I'm just gonna return to the to the beginning uh, of of the opening uh, e4, and now we're gonna cover it once again uh, to reach that position just so it uh, sinks in a little better. So d5, like I said, the Scandinavian defense captures captures knight c3 attacks the queen queen d6. This is what this this opening is about. D4 knight to f6. Uh, uh, sorry, not knight to c6, knight to f6, and now after knight to f3, we play a6, take away the b5 square from white's knight, g3, preparing bishop g2 and bishop to f4, we're gonna go bishop to g4, we have to develop our queen side as soon as possible, bishop g2, and now knight to c6, and here we have castles, castles, uh, and now we discussed that uh, h3 is possible, d5 is possible, but that bishop to f4 will be the most played move here, and after queen to b4, which is perfectly fine for black, now uh, you have to find something to play for white. So we said that the d5 doesn't really work because of e5, uh, and we've now shown uh, what happens when a when a3 is played. Queen to c4, and you can mess around with this position a little bit. It's a very very rich position to play. But basically, your main your main struggle is how to. Uh, avoid losing the queen, how not to get checkmated, and how to how to develop your king side. So this is what you uh, what you're most worried about. Uh, but White can also play knight to e2 and defend the pawn this way. So now it's defended three times, and uh, sorry three times, and you don't want to rush in uh, rush in to grab a pawn just yet. For example, if you remove one of the defenders. Uh, go bishop captures on f3 and grab the pawn now after captures and captures uh, you're gonna get queen to c1 so now you cannot sacrifice the rook here uh, to grab the pawn because the queen uh, also defends it so uh, you, you're not going to be able to capture the pawn and here c3 is being threatened and now you're uh, behind on time rook d8 you have to move it uh, c3 let's say queen to c5 and b4 and white's attack is uh, coming along you still haven't done anything to develop your king side white has a beautiful bishop pair here it's fully operational and you have to be very careful here queen c4 and now white might even consider b5 and you know things are happening for white and you you're, you're pretty much stuck here, uh, not developing your pieces at all. For example, if captures, white can just bust open with with a4, bishop, uh, b captures on a4, and now rook to d1, and the white has full de full development. Captures, captures, and it's a very very tough position for black to play. This pawn is hanging, and I mean you can defend it with b5, but it's such an ugly position to play for black. So uh, after this. Uh, knight to e2 move you you might want to consider before capturing this and going for the pawn right away so what you want to do here uh, is just play the very calm e6 move also knight to d5 is possible going after the bishop uh, i would recommend you to try e6 but if you're more of a knight d5 person you, you can also try that and see what happens in your games but e6 uh, just prepares to you know develop your king side and then uh, it's just gonna be a, a, a nice game. So one, uh, uh, we're just gonna explore one of the ways that this game can continue. So white will almost always play a3 here because a3 is uh, pure poison uh, against black in this position. You never, you never capture on b2. So you want to move the queen. You're gonna move the queen to b5, and again, queen b5 with the reason of shifting the queen to the queen side. Uh, sorry, the king side in this in this case. And now, uh, after let's say h3, challenging the the bishop, you're still gonna capture capture, and now move queen to f5. And now uh, your queen is not in the way of all of the pawns. Uh, uh, on that side of the board and uh, well you've moved the queen with tempo h3 pawn is under attack so white will have to waste the move to, to defend it and only now will you play e5 and now you're very happy yeah uh, your opponent advanced uh, two squares well not at once but the one square at a time you can uh, develop the bishop and so on so here uh, white has to react to this of course this is still impossible because the queen hangs so you're going to move the bishop and now a nice capture fast on d4 captures captures you're going to play captures the bishop will capture and now 
now you develop again with tempo at bishop to c5. There's a double attack on the bishop. Of course, you still cannot capture because of this. And after c3, let's say now you're going to capture, capture and bring the rook into the game and the black finished development. Uh, imagine this uh, ahead of white. So really, really incredible stuff. And uh, it's, a, it's a pretty dangerous position, uh, but uh, black, black will hold this... Uh, uh, well, not not without much problems, but uh, th there is no way for white to immediately take advantage of this or uh, to you know do do anything. Uh, yes, white does have the open C file, but not it's not much to go on. Black will be able to defend this uh, ver very easily. And uh, if you go for something like queen b3, try and uh, you know go after the the black king right away. Queen b5 uh, takes uh, takes it all away. Not not much to worry about here. If queen captures on f7, then there's even the rook d7 idea, and now uh, the queen has almost nowhere to go. All of these squares are covered, the covered, 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 and covered. So queen would have to go back, and now rook e2 takes uh, initiative away from white, and now it's black to, black to play. Uh, so this is uh, one of the lines that could happen, but it's uh, it's very important to know what to do in this position. So this is basically the critical position after after your queen is attacked and you play queen to b4. Uh, several moves uh, black uh, white can choose from d5. Uh, like I said, a3 also possible. So uh, these are some of the some of the moves that you'll see. But knight to e2. If white goes for this, then white knows what he's doing, and here you have to be very uh, very very careful. So uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's uh, that's it for for this uh, short tutorial on how to play this queen to d6 Scandinavian. Uh, not a lot of things to consider. Uh, of course, if uh, for example after let's say queen captures on d5 and uh, let's say something like uh, this happens, uh, h3 and now g3. White has a lot of other options. White can play h3 to prevent your bishop from being developed to g4. White can also completely ignore the g3 plan and play bishop to d3. But now that you know basic ideas behind the white's strongest replies, you will uh, very easily check online what happens if white goes for a suboptimal move, and then you're going to be able to, to punish that and you know uh, come out on top even faster. Uh, so yeah, I will also put some very interesting links regarding this uh, opening in the description below. So first link, uh, the Evans Gambit tutorial, if you haven't seen it. The second game, uh, me playing this uh, game over the board in a classical uh, chess game. So you might want to check that out as well. Uh, and also two games where Magnus Carlsen employed this opening. So uh, it's also played uh, on the top level. So uh, may maybe you're going to enjoy that as well. So uh, these four links will be the first thing you see in the description below. Do check them out. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's uh, the second tutorial. I do hope you guys enjoyed it. Try playing it and, uh, you know, tell me uh, either in this video or uh, in some of my other videos how you enjoyed it and uh, did you have any success with it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of the Morphe Saga, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. And uh, also, uh, I would like to thank Paolo Veras, Dmitro Semensky, Frank Holmes, uh, Jason Baumgartner, uh, also known as Pushshift, and Louis Perrault for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, I already said uh, the as usual stuff. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I do hope you guys enjoy it and uh, see, see you, see you uh, in the next video.